In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Such an honor to be with you tonight. Um, St. Mary's Fast is, uh, you know, a special moment. Uh, I, I love it so much. It's one of my very, very, very favorite fasts. Oh, wow, okay. Um, it's special, you know. I come in you always with a lot of questions, a lot of uh, stuff to ask, and um, I always get answers, okay, after the fast. Um, and uh, if you're like me, okay, grew up in Egypt, okay, you would know how St. Mary's Fast is special. It's not just special, it's so special, right? Uh, people flock in the monasteries, thousands, thousands, especially in the south, right? And this, for example, in Asyut, right? People don't just go to church there, right? And they finish church, and then they stay out. They camp outside, okay? When we, they do the Zephah, the Zephah is all around the monastery, right? Uh, so special. And of course, you know, growing up, I know that's not the season, Kiak, right? We always know Ambayu uh, Annas, you know, overnight uh, praise, right? The Tazbaha during Kiak, right? Everybody knows. I remember back in Egypt, you know, my, if my parents even not sitting in the same room, you know, living room, bedroom, you're always going to hear both of them playing at the same time. It's just echoing in the house, right? So usually, this is how we love St. Mary. So why? I'm not questioning, okay, like she is perfect, she's amazing, great, but why? What do we love, what great about St. Mary? Okay, let's step back. Why do we come to church? Yeah, why? I think, uh, you know, every now and then we have kind of to stop, right, and be like, okay, you know, question what we do, so we don't lose what, like what we're supposed to do, right? So, and as a Buna say, know the why, right? So this is what we're going to do today. I think, you know, I start thinking about this. Okay, why do I come to church, right? And I feel like, you know, we're all going to agree that what? We need the presence of God. I believe so, right? We all have the same goal, right? Have the presence of God. Because we know when God is active, when God is here, when God is present, hard things become easy, right? Do you agree? And uh, if God is not here, or God is not present, what happens? Life gets what? Harder. Easy become hard. When I'm with God, I'm in heaven. If I'm not with God, bad place. Right? Is God present in your life? Say yes or no. Yes? All right. It's a, it's a tricky question, right? God is present? Of course it is. Right? He's, tr- he's present. What are you talking about, Wasim? Is he necessarily like, always present? You know what I'm talking about, right? That's a, yeah, that's a question. So I actually started looking up the internet, okay, to see what is, how do you define the presence of God, okay? And I saw there is, the, like, they categorize present, God's presence in three different categories, all right? So there's omnipresence, and omnipresence, what is omnipresence? Yes, everywhere. This is probably the answer that you got from the question, right? Like, oh, where is God? Everywhere, of course, right? Indwelling, right? How do you define this? Yes, if you're Christian, you're chrismated, right? And you come to church, right? Take part in communion, right? God is in you, right? Manifesting presence. Okay, what is manifesting presence, right? It's like a personal experience that you have with God, okay? That... Even though you are in the middle of the church, in a camp, retreat, you forget everything and you focus on God. I believe everybody from us, right, we all went to church camps, or Khilwa, back in uh, Egypt, right? Uh, or a liturgy that you went to the monastery, or liturgy you come here, you know, the, the 5 a.m. liturgies we used to have on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, right? And you feel like, wow, God is talking to me now. It's different. A liturgy that you never forget, right? <coughs> so that's the goal. I believe that that's the goal of life. To always live in this constant state. To be always, God is always within you. You're always thinking about him. You always have this interaction, personal experience. And this is what St. Mary had. And today, I think, tonight you're here. It's not because, oh, I chose to come to church. Is because God is reaching out to you. And he reached out several times. 
Let's start from book of Genesis. You guys have an hour? Let's talk about it. Book of Genesis, God created men. God created everything, right? And when he created men, what? Do you say, oh, I'm not going to let you eat or anything? No. He gave you power over everything, right? But Genesis 3 happened. Oops, what happened? Yeah, he chose to break this intimacy. Literally, God was walking with them in the garden. Walking with them in the garden. How intimate this is. So intimate. But what did God say? Did God say, all right, that's a headache. I'm not going to reach out. Why? No. How many of us servants, when we go to Sunday school, okay, when that knowing kid, you know, just doesn't come, thank God, alhamdulillah, that class would be awesome today, right? So, no different. What did he do? Moses came. He was like, let's build, you know, the tabernacle. Very detailed. He wants the people to know that I am with them. I'm with you everywhere. You walk, I'm with you. Go to war, I'm with you everywhere. That's, uh, I want to be more closer you know what? Let's build a temple. And I'm going to fill the temple with all my glory. Did he stop? No. He became man. He took flesh, which is I love here in our church when we use this. Took flesh. Avicii Sarex. Took flesh. Became like us. Ate, walked, had a mom, had friends, was betrayed, crucified. <coughs> St. Gregory says, Yesterday I was crucified with Christ. Today I'm glorified with him. Yesterday I died with him. Today I'm made alive with him. Yesterday I was buried with him. Today I'm raised up with him. We did everything with him. We are like 100% fellowship. He even taught us how to win over death. Did he stop? No. He wants to come even closer. His body become food for us. For only last supper? No. Every single Sunday or every single day. He always says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Did he stop? No. Revelation 3. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Always with us. Wow. So, from his side, he's done everything. From the beginning of the book till the end of the book. Beginning, God with men, end, God with men. Clearly, that's the goal, right? What is the goal? To be with him. To be with us, be in fellowship, or to use the church word, communion. That's the goal. That's God's goal. So let's get back to our question. Why are we at church? Because we need our, his presence. Do we use or do we feel that every Sunday? Can we feel it like every day? There is a book I like by Father Alexander Schmimmen, okay? It's talking about sacramental life, okay? Sacramental life. So, you know, the sacrament, like Eucharist, right? It's a sacrament. But having a sacramental life, not, not just Sunday, every day. He says, since the church is to proclaim that mystery and communicate it to the people, the essential act by which she accomplishes, she, the church, this is always a sacramental act. Through this act, we are made participants in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, and thus we enter into the very life of kingdom. We are made participants. Is this what we feel when we partake in the sacraments? When we're in confession, do we feel, do we picture that it's God is on the cross and his blood is basically like washing us? Or do we feel like it's a counseling a free counseling offered by the church. Just talk about stuff. Let's talk about some stuff. Because I need to come. Because otherwise I'm not going to be able to serve. 40 days. Wow, okay. When we come to church too. Liturgy, right? Um, what do we feel? Just go to the Urban Committee to judge how 
uh, the Urban was nine out of 10. Oh, it's not like some Mark Houston, like George would say. Or do we feel that, you know, we are on the table, sitting with him, sitting with the disciples, and we are partaking. We're living heaven on earth. So, again, we'll go back. Why, St. Mary? And why sometimes we feel like God, with all this, all the means that he, he made to reach, reach to us, we always feel that we are sometimes lonely and miles and miles away from him. I think the question shouldn't be, oh, why God is not here? I think we're asking the wrong question. I think the question should be the opposite. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready to receive the question? Do we receive God? Are we ready to be temples? If you're inviting people over and they don't have a place to sit, are you going to invite them? Are they going to come? No. Let me give you a ride, but I don't have a car. What is this question? Nothing. Okay. So we ask the same thing. Do we have a place where God can dwell? And that's why we are obsessed with St. Mary. Because she's the real temple. What do you mean real temple? How many times we heard that, you know, St. Mary talked, preached? Not many times. In the gospel, she didn't talk much. Did she preach? Tradition doesn't say anything about that. However, we know she's like perfect. When we said, Hail, Hail Mary, right? What do we say? The grace of Daniel, joy of Abel, right? Who are those people? They lived like, you know, hundreds, hundreds of years before St. Mary. Basically, the church is saying that whatever she acquired, this is like, you know, the grace of Daniel. This is like the joy of Abel. This is how, how God was present in her life. So that's, uh, you guys remember Genesis 3 we talked about, right? In the beginning. After man sin, what did God say? What did guy, uh, God said something, like ask a question. Man, where are you? Beautiful question. The God didn't know where they were. Of course, he, kn he knew, right? How did God say this? Angrily? Where are you? Because I want to find you and judge you, beat you or something. You know? No, he didn't say that. He said, where are you? A wake-up call. Reflect. What did you do? Tell me. You messed up. And I think this is probably what God wants us to do. To, to say, you just, I messed up. He doesn't want you to fix anything. <laughs> That's the goal. But he wants you now to say, I messed up. So God is telling us today, man, where are you? And may God help us to repent and become holy temples of him. Amen.